Are coalition governments bad for markets? Would markets be spooked if the BJP ends up, for example, less than 250, dependent on coalition partners, or uh, almost unpredictably, the opposition is able to cobble together a government? Are coalition really bad for markets? Because they've been very good for reforms. Some of India's biggest reforms have taken place during coalition governments. Yeah, but I think that those reforms happened when India literally had a gun on its head, right? Which is the fact that we were bankrupt, we needed to reform. Most countries carry out economic reforms when they go bankrupt. That's what we're seeing around the world as well. I think that there's no doubt that if the BJP gets below 250, there'll be an initial big knee-jerk negative reaction on the market. I mean, if, if that black swan scenario kind of thing happens, if the, if the BJP gets less than 250, the market will be down 10 to 20% in a, in a day, in a flash. 10 to 20 percent in a day. Yeah, I mean, in terms of it'll be down that much. I can tell you that if it gets less than 250, uh, that will be the scenario. But it's not the base case scenario of anyone just now. Uh, I don't think anyone that. But if that were to happen, you would get an instant reaction. And then it depends again about what happens. In 2004, something similar happened. Let's say, let's just play that out, tease that out. But then the markets recovered very quickly. Why? Two factors. One, that there was a global emerging market boom which was happening. Two, that because they appointed people like Manmohan Singh and, you know, Chidambaram at that point in time, they were generally seen to be okay. But India got lucky because we had a big emerging market boom, we rode that. This time, the uh, risk I see is that if you get below 250, how will the verdict be interpreted? If it's interpreted as being that, hey, we need to go back to, you know, doing a lot more welfare, spend on that and stuff, I think that it, it could be a much longer haul out of that. I'm very positive on, on India in the long term. I think that there are the, the, the fundamentals look great. But yeah, this is the most expensive stock market in the world currently. It is also the reason why foreign investors have been skittish about coming in. The on-the-ground environment still sort of needs to be improved a lot for foreign direct investment to come in. We are attracting FDI as a share of the economy today of just over around 1% of GDP. When China and all were booming, they were doing 4% of GDP, you know, in terms of how much foreign investment as a share of the economy was coming in. So there's a lot more work which needs to be done. And the other thing which I, um, I wrote a piece in the FT about this a month ago, never take growth for granted or never take economic success for granted. I, I cited five examples there of countries which were seen as these, you know, great superstars five years ago. And today they are seen as breakdown nations. Give me an example. Uh, Canada. Uh, has seen the worst in terms of economic performance of any developed country in the last uh, 10 years or so. Germany was seen as a big economic star in terms of it, it's fallen off. South Africa, Chile, these are all countries which at some point in time were seen as very good. Chile was seen as a big star of Latin America, fallen off the radar. So in terms of we just need to be sort of, you know, take it three, four years at a time. Uh, but generally I feel still constructive, but you've got to be... Careful about no, so that. how important is having a stable government? Stable, the, you know, is stability yeah. the critical factor? Do you, does India need at the moment to ensure that economic growth moves to the next level? A stable government with a strong leader, which is one narrative. The other narrative is that in a diverse country, you need to accommodate, build federal structures. Which is the best model for India? No, the best model for India is a government which truly believes in reducing the role of government in people's lives. I think that is what the key is, whether it's stable or coalition, I can point out like both to you and something which I've also said in my public utterances earlier, that how do you create gr better business confidence in terms of it, how, you know, for foreigners or for domestic people. One thing that I've written about extensively, which is I think the extensive use of investigative agencies or giving them too much power has deep consequences, I think, as far as investment is concerned, uh, you know, for, so there's an economic consequence to that. It may be a pull a good political tool, there's an economic consequence to this. Those are the kind of things I believe are more important for business investment and other things to keep uh, picking up, rather than this notion about that. Yeah, sure. So whichever government is willing to focus on that, I think will be better for India's long-term growth prospects. Because one of the debates in this election campaign has been over, over the economy. You've got the opposition saying that what we are seeing in the guise of faster economic growth is actually cronyism taking off from what you said, that there are a few billionaires who benefited hugely post-COVID, 
but the lives of people at the bottom of the pyramid have not changed. We also have reports of a number of Indians who have taken their golden visas, moved to Dubai, you know, long distance nationalism, looking, can I get a Portuguese visa? And those numbers are also increasing. So there seem to be the Modi government which says we want to reward wealth creators. And in some way, the opposition is saying, all very well, you want to reward wealth creators, but it cannot re result in cronyism and concentration of power. Which of these narratives do you find more compelling at the moment? No, I think that uh, I'm, on the, I'm optimistic on the Indian economy, but I think that there are, there's stuff which is going on which needs corrective things. Is there is, a real threat of cronyism? Um, I think that, yes, in India's case or in any emerging market, there is always a case in terms of that. The previous government, the cronyism was out of control, you can argue, in terms of what happened 10 years ago. That's why you got the Modi wave after that, I think, because of that. So I feel that there are shades of gray here. I know you want to define this as opposition versus, versus government, but as far as I'm concerned, as an investor, I think there's enormous amount of wealth creation in India. It's great, but I also am mindful of the fact that if it becomes too skewed, what happens in terms of it? And I think that in the last five years, there are lots of good billionaires who have come up in India in sectors such as manufacturing. But when I look at the data to me and tells me that billionaire wealth as a share of the economy today is 25% and no other country in the world has that, um, I do get a bit concerned about that.